Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock on a Sunday. It's time for a review show special. This is where I take a particular product, a particular uh, trick, and I do a deep dive into it and tell you everything that you need to know. So it's a little bit more of a, a detailed review than a, than, a, than a regular review show that I do with myself and Ryland. And today I'm gonna talk to you about what I think at the moment is probably one of the uh, the hottest topics in magic, and that is Pro Caps by Lloyd Barnes. Um, now, we're going to get into this. The thing is, I am attached to this project. If you've seen the trailer, um, you'll know that I'm attached to this project because I'm all over the trailer. I'm going to explain to you what my involvement is. Once I've explained what my involvement is, I'm then going to talk about uh, the project and and what I think about it and why I got involved in it and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to give it a review now obviously I'm involved in the project now it's not my trick to be clear it's Lloyd's trick uh, I only developed the routines and performed them and did the tutorial but I am involved in the project so for those people last week that said oh this review of tri trivia isn't a uh, isn't a review it's a very very biased video of course it is it was my project but I have so many people wanting me to talk about trivia, I did it as a review show special. And I openly said, I'm gonna give this 100%. Obviously, I'm, uh, I'm biased, but you know, it's my channel. If you don't wanna watch the reviews that I do, then please choose not to re uh, watch them. That's absolutely fine. I review hundreds of products. And the problem is, a lot of the time when I bring something out, people want me to talk about it. So this is the best platform. The point I'm trying to make is obviously, I'm going to be biased when it comes to this project because I am involved in it. However, as normal, as with everything I do, you're getting my total, complete and utter honesty when it comes to this. And if it wasn't very good, I would tell you. With that being said, let's roll the trailer. Let's level up. And what's on that? <laughs> I believe is one of the best tricks ever created, but there's just one glaring issue that stops me performing it all the time. What is this? I genuinely have no idea what it's even supposed to be. All I know is that it screams magic prop to me, to layman, to everyone. And I've always said to myself, if I could perform this trick with something more organic and more ordinary, that it's so good I'd probably perform this trick every day for the rest of my life. If only there was something that this looked like. Something more regular, something more every day. Level up, Sonia. Right. All I have to do is push. Work it out, can you let me know? Because it freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So that was a trailer for ProCaps, and ProCaps basically is Lloyd's reimagining of dynamic coins or nickels to dimes. Uh, in the UK, uh, it's it's being called dynamic coins. Over in the States, I think it's called nickels to dimes. Uh, and it's the idea of having two caps and a bang ring and you're making stacks of coins appear and disappear. Uh, I got into magic as a magic demonstrator. And I spent all of my time deming this trick over and over again. And it was not in like a big magic shop. It was in a small local fancy dress shop. So there was a lot of time when I was just standing there messing around with props. And so I'd spent years from sort of the age of 18 or 19 messing around with dynamic coins and coming up with various different routines for it. Now, the problem with dynamic coins is A, it's oversaturated. Everybody knows what it is. If you ever go into Marvin's Magic Dem area or Hamleys or somewhere like that or Harrods and you walk in, there's a very good chance the guy there is going to be Deming Dynamic Coins because it's a great trick to Dem and sell. It's a little bit like uh, Svengali deck in that regard. So it is oversaturated. As Lloyd said in the trailer, those little brass caps, nobody knows what those little brass caps are. And as a result of that, what tends to happen is people that are new into magic buy dynamic coins. Of course, it's a great entry point into magic. But then when you get to a certain point, you stop. Uh, when you get to a certain point, you, um, um, you kind of go, well, OK, I'm not going to do this now. I'm progressing onto this or this or this. You move from the Marvin's magic level of magic. And there's nothing wrong with the Marvin's Magic level of magic, but that's like beginner entry level, and you move up to buying stuff from Penguin Magic and Alakazam and Vanishing Ink and so on and so forth. And, and that's normally when your dynamic coins falls by the wayside. And I don't think I've seen any professional magicians actually perform dynamic coins in the real world at real gigs, because by the time they're actually gigging, they've kind of moved past that as a prop. Now, what Lloyd has done is he has taken dynamic coins and he has built them into a bottle cap. So you have a, a, a bottle cap instead of a brass ring. Now this solves several problems. Uh, the first problem is it looks a little bit more, well, it looks a lot more organic because now you're not carrying these little brass caps around with you. Uh, in fact, the cap becomes immaterial. It's just something to cover a stack of coins up with. You just go, uh, you can reach into your pocket and go, I'll use this, or you can pretend to pick a cap up from a different table or you can pretend to unscrew a cap from the top of a bottle cap it doesn't uh, from a bottle it doesn't matter the point is that they now become a less recognizable thing they become a bottle cap right um which makes it way more organic and people don't connect the dots one of the magician's biggest fears is i'm not going to do dynamic coins because a lot of people might know it as a beginner entry trick and i totally get that it becomes not that when you start using a pro cap gimmick. So that's what Lloyd brought to the table. He reimagined uh, dynamic coins as pro caps. And I'm going to be addressing a lot of the criticism on the cafe because there has been a lot of criticism on the cafe. And uh, there's a few people that said, oh, it doesn't need to be made into bottle caps. Oh, uh, the, the brass caps are fine. Listen, anybody on the cafe, if they had the idea and the resources to create a dynamic coins or nickels to dimes gimmick out of bottle caps, they would do so absolutely unequivocally without a shadow of a doubt, they would do so immediately. It is a good idea. Ask any creator of magic if it is a good idea to create dynamic coins with bottle caps and they will immediately tell you, yeah, that's a good idea. So that's what Lloyd brought to the table. Uh, and Lloyd's not a performer. He openly says he's not a performer. And uh, probably about a year ago now, just under a year ago, uh, me and Lloyd were talking and he showed me dynamic coins. They've had them in the Murphy's warehouse for quite a while. And I was like, oh man, that's incredible. What a really good idea. That's one of the best ideas I've ever seen in a long time. And I, I almost begged him to be a part of the project. And the reason I wanted to be a part of the project is because of my experience with this gimmick. I've used dynamic coins for years. I love dynamic coins. I've always fiddled around with it. You know, one of the things that I love doing as a, as a performer and a creator and a lover of magic is I like tinkering with old props and just seeing how uh, they tick and seeing different ways that I can actually uh, use this, right? That's what I really like doing. And that's what we have here, right? That's what we have here. Um, we have a, a, an old prop that a lot of people have used um, as I said, a beginner entry trick, but I, I really do believe adding a bottle cap to the gimmick, making it into a bottle cap, 
breathes new life into it and makes it accessible for magicians. So I immediately jumped on and said, I want to be involved in this. And I genuinely believe that nobody has performed with these gimmicks more than me in the world because I've been performing with them solidly for almost a year now. And when I say solidly, I mean solidly because I don't know if people realize this. Uh, when, when you hear people, if you're not a creator, you're probably not aware of this, but the creative process, and I'm not even just talking about the process of creating the trick. I'm talking about getting it from a product that the creator thinks is finished to an actual physical product that hits the stalls it can take a long, long time. And it took the best part of a year. Um, and during that year, I've been performing solidly with these things. Um, and one thing that me and Lloyd were both really, 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 really high on was making sure there were a ton of live performances. And the reason we wanted live performances is because we both knew that there was going to be a small section of magicians that would question as to whether this would work in the real world or not. And I wanted a ton of um, real world performance uh, videos so you can see this trick working in the real world and you can see the reactions it gets from people in the real world because this if you actually think about the dynamic coins or the nickels to dimes or whatever you want to call it if you actually think about it it's a pretty damn incredible trick coins appear they jump from one place to another they go through a table they go through the hand so many amazing things happen with this trick right so many amazing things happen um, and if you could actually make that work in a real world environment, then wow, right? I mean, you, you've got the ability to do so much. So uh, I, I got involved with the project and I've spent the last year creating routines. And my, my, my part in this project, so to speak, is it's not my trick. I've got no financial interest in the trick at all. I didn't get paid for doing this project. I haven't had any sort of bonus for doing this project. I got involved in it because I believed in it. And I believed, I already had a bunch of ideas with dynamic coins anyway, that I thought would translate really well over to these things. And I thought by doing that, it would, I, could, it would have been very easy for Murphys just to put it out or put it out with a minimal download. That's what you get with dynamic coins, right? You just get a sheet of instructions. You don't really get much in the way of instructions with nickels to dimes or dynamic coins. And it would have been very easy to have a 20 minute download, a performance to camera, maybe a performance in a live environment, a very quick overview of how the gimmick works, and then that's it. Instead, what we have is two hours of instruction covering 11 brand new routines with live performances of every single trick. So you can see exactly what happens with this gimmick. And I think it's a testament to Murphy's and it's a testament to Lloyd that they were able to keep the price as low as it is, whilst at the same time also delivering on a ton of content with a ton of really great ideas. So you can see that I love this. I mean, this it's obvious. I wouldn't have spent a year working with the trick and creating routines. And out of the 11 routines you see, I probably created about 40 or 50, but I whittled it down to what I considered to be the best 11, right? And it's this point in the review, and I call it a review, it's more of a uh, it's more of a, I don't want to call it sales pitch because I get nothing out of it. If you buy it, I don't get anything. Uh, but it's not a sales pitch, but it's a, I, I want to say a public service announcement because there's been a lot of misinformation spread, especially on the cafe. And, you know, I want this video to kind of address all of those issues from somebody who actually works it. So let's, let's talk about those, shall we? Let's talk about the concerns because... As with the typical Magic Cafe latest and greatest thread, people are making blanket statements um, and they haven't even got the prop in their hand. They're saying, this won't work in the real world. What? I I'm sorry, have you got the trick? Have you seen the tutorial? Have you even held the prop? Have you um, gone and, and, and actually worked it in front of an audience? Or are you just making this statement based on seeing one trailer? Uh, and you're trying to sound clever by talking about what you know about, whilst in reality you haven't got a clue. Is that where we are here with this? Because without being funny, I do a review show, and I review multiple products every single week. And you know what? When I review a product, 
Do you know what I do? Do you know what I do? I have a look at that product. I watch the tutorial. I try it out. I perform it to the people in my office. I perform it to my friends and family. A lot of the time, I'll take it out. I will base an opinion on real, actual information. I won't base an opinion on five minutes of a trailer and then trying to sound clever on an online forum. I just don't do that. But apparently, that's an okay thing to do. You've got people saying... Um, oh, Murphy's cut corners with the prop and that the prop was not fit for purpose and shouldn't have been released at the point that it was released. And it's a good idea, but it wasn't finished through to... What the hell are you talking about? I mean, you A, you haven't seen... The, you're basing this on the trailer. B, you haven't seen the tutorial. C, you haven't even held the prop in your hand. And D... You don't know. This. I know that Lloyd has gone through multiple prototypes. Lloyd and Murphy's spent a fortune on 30 or 40 different prototypes of this thing till they finally got it to where they needed it to be. Now, a lot of this misinformation and, frankly, bull comes from the fact that there's a lip at the bottom of the stack of coins. And it's a, it's a small lip. Now, Lloyd took a really, really powerful camera and zoomed in on this lip during the trailer because he wanted to show exactly everything that you get. He didn't want to hold anything back, right? So, yeah, there is a lip. And people are saying, oh, it's been badly... It's not been badly designed. Um, if, if that lip was an issue then when I go out and perform with it, and I do regularly, and now the project's over, I'm still going and performing with it, I've got a gig tomorrow, and I will be doing this trick, it will be in my pocket, because it takes up no pocket space, and I've got so many routines I can do with it. But, so, so you know, there's nobody who's done this more than me, and I know that the lip isn't an issue, because the thing is, people haven't got 360 degree viewing capability, right? So when you look at a stack of coins, and you're looking at it, from whatever angle you're looking at it from, it just looks like the bottom coin is jutting out slightly. That's what it looks like. It's actually more deceptive that that lip is there because what that lip allows it to look like is that the stack is actually kind of squiffed slightly. And obviously you have a regular coin on top of the stack. And if that coin is slightly squiffed to the side as well, it just makes the whole thing look a lot more deceptive. So it's totally not an issue that that lip is there. Now, obviously, there's going to be certain members of the magic community, especially those sort of people that regularly post on the latest, greatest forum on the, uh, on, on the Magic Cafe, that will insist that it's an issue. Yes, that lip is an issue. It's a big issue. It's the biggest issue I've ever seen. Without even performing it, without even trying it, without even having the prop in hand, they will make that sweeping statement. But from somebody who spent the last year performing this to live people, to live people and live audiences, and you can see that footage on the project i'm going to roll you some live performances now you will see that that lip is totally not an issue nobody mentions it and trust me i perform this at holiday parks i perform this at um what do you call it um uh army bases and military bases the sort of places where people will bust you in a heartbeat i perform this for drunk people in a bar the other thing that people on the cafe were saying is oh people are acting up for the camera if there are live performances they're just acting trust me people don't do that in the uk they do not act up in any way shape or form it's exactly the opposite you do magic they're really into it you pull a camera out and they become more reserved that's just how uk people are the reactions you see on this project are real reactions based on this trick knocking their absolute socks off and if you watch the live performances which i am going to play you in a minute you'll see that that lip is absolutely not an issue if anything it makes it more deceptive right now the big issue that people have is um the, the stack of coins, right, and, and the lip and so on and so forth. And the other thing that people are saying is two other things, actually. Uh, one, the recycle logo on top of the cap. Oh, why can't it be a Coca-Cola bottle uh, logo? Why can't it be this? Why can't it be that? Two reasons on that. Number one, uh, I know from Lloyd's, uh, I've spoken to Lloyd about this. Uh, it's not a Coca-Cola cap. There's millions of bottles out there in the world. There's millions of different caps. It's just a cap off a bottle. It's not a Coca-Cola bottle. If we were trying to pitch this as a Coca-Cola bottle cap, then that would be one thing. But we're not. We're saying it's a cap. That's why you get a red one and a blue one. Because the blue one could be from a water bottle or something like that, right? You get two caps. Also, if you look anywhere in the UK, if you've got a bottle 
next to you, get a bottle of Coke, get a bottle of Pepsi, get a bottle of Fanta, whatever. Have a look at the cap. It's got something to do with recycle on it. It's either going to say, please recycle me. There's going to be a recycle logo. There's going to be something. And that's being rolled out all over the world as well because everybody knows how important recycling is. And all of the drinks companies as a whole have made it uh, have made a decision to have that recycle logo on the cap. It would be suspicious if a recycle logo was not on the cap. Um, so in terms of the recycle logo being on there, I think we can put that to bed right now. Trust me, it's absolutely not an issue. Uh, if anything, it makes the cap more organic and genuine. And then you have the people saying about the weight of the cap, right? And they're saying, oh, because it's, it's gimmicked, it's going to be heavier than a normal cap. Now, Again, they're making this decision without even trying to see one or having even hold one in their hand, but whatever. Uh, they're saying that the cap is, is too heavy. Now, the cap is not too heavy. Does it weigh heavier than a normal cap? Absolutely, because you've got to have a hollowed out stack of coins in there, right? Yes, it does weigh heavier. Can you perceivably tell the difference? Not really, no. And what I mean by not really is if you gave somebody a normal cap, and then a second later, you gave them that cap and you held them and you told them to ask, uh, tell you which one weighs heavier. They're going to say the pro caps cap weighs heavier. But during the course of the performance, they have no frame of reference. And what I mean by that is it's not like they've weighed this regular cap before they pick up the pro caps cap. They just pick up the pro caps cap. Right. And although it feels slightly heavier, it's not perceptible. Now, I've had, I said that on the cafe and I've had people come back at me and saying, stop avoiding the question. I don't understand why I was told to, that I was avoiding the question when I was directly answering the question. But, and they said I was being dismissive of the concern. A, it's not even my project. I don't make a penny out of this. I'm just, I just believe in it as a project. And again, nobody has worked on this more than me, including anybody at Murphy's. And I have experience of this. Now, with my thing with regards to the weight of the cap, it's totally not an issue. But you'll see in the routines I do, most of the time, I'm getting them to put, I'm putting the cap on the palm of their hand here. Or I'm getting them to put it on the back of their hand here. Because if you put the cap here or here, you can't tell the difference in terms of weight. When you're holding a cap like this, you can. But if it's here or if it's here, you can't feel the weight of it at all. And a lot of the routines are constructed so that there's no point where they're picking up the cap. And therein comes the main point with this gimmick. The main thing that I want, to, uh, I want to talk about and the main reason why I think people have issues with this. A lot of the time, and I understand why, but what's happening is a lot of the people in the magic community don't really understand what's going on here. What's going on here is, um, okay, so if you've seen the classic Marvin's Magic Dem of a dynamic coin set, uh, they normally follow the same path. Look, I've got two caps. I've got a brass ring. Look, there's some coins appeared. Now I'm going to make the coins jump from there to there. Look at that. Now I'm going to make the coins jump back again. Now I'm going to put the coins here. I'm going to put the other stack on top and they're going to go through there. Look, I'm going to make them jump from here to here. I'm going to make them jump through your hand. Now I'm going to make them all disappear. And that's the end of the trick. That's basically what dynamic coins is, right? That's what you do. The emphasis the, throughout the whole of the routine is on the cap and the emphasis throughout the whole of the routine are on the stack of coins. The routines that I have constructed, I start off by talking about the classic Dem routine, just because it's, uh, you know, it's important to talk about the history of the product. So I, I talk about the classic Dem routine, but the majority of the routines I do, pretty much all of them, the focus is not on the cap. The focus is not on the stack of coins. In fact, the coins are examined before and after. And uh, the cap is not the focal point of the trick. The focal point of the trick instead is on something else. Um, and I teach how to do a switch, a very simple switch that's based on the French drop. And all of the routines, or not all of them, but a lot of them start with having four coins on the table uh, or taking four coins out of your pocket or borrowing four coins, having them examined and stacking them up and putting them on the table. And in the action of squaring them up and stacking them on the table, you've switched those four coins for the stack. So now they don't feel like they need to examine the stack because they've just examined those four coins. Everything feels exactly fine for them. Then I get a bottle cap. And as I say, I don't put any emphasis on the bottle cap at all. The bottle cap is not there for any important point at all. It's just, uh, uh, oh, let's just grab this and, and cover it up, right? 
And then at that point, I go into whatever the routine is that I'm going into. I'll give you an example. I'll give you two examples. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to perform these right now. I'm going to show you some live performance footage instead. But I think I'll do a mat test on this. And I'll perform all of these routines to mat in a live environment, maybe later on in the week or next week. But I'll give you a couple of examples. So there's a routine I do, and it's a coin through table. It's one of my favorite routines with a gimmick. And the idea is that you have a cap in your pocket, you have a glass, a small glass, and you have four coins. So you have the four coins examined and you switch them and you put them on the table, but you've switched them for the stack. And you say, great, I don't want you to think I'm going to manipulate these. I'm going to grab, um, I've got a bottle cap here. I'm just going to cover those up with the bottle cap. So now they, the four coins they think are underneath the bottle cap. Now you have the glass examined and you've got the coins here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the glass back and you're going to hold it in the tips of the fingers and go underneath the table. And you're just going to do this. And as you do this underneath the table, you just flick one of the coins into the glass. It's easy to do because it's all happening under the table. So you just do this and one coin drops into the glass. The other three stay in finger palm and you tip it out. And you go, believe it or not, that's the first coin through the table. Even though I can't get to the coins, let me do that again. Pick up the coin, put it inside. Tap, the next one goes through. That's two coins. Tap, the next one goes through. That's three coins. Tap, the next one goes through. That's all four coins. And you can see there's nothing under the cap. And I just pick the cap up and show that there's no coins there. The cap is totally unimportant. The cap has nothing to do with this routine at all. The cap is just something that you're using to cover up the coins. It's like the equivalent of putting a card when you're doing a card routine. And, oh, uh, and you're in a restaurant. So I'm just going to put that over there underneath that napkin. We'll get back to that in a little bit. It is unimportant. There is no emphasis at any point placed on, the, um, on that bottle cap. The focus are on the coins going through the table. The coins are examined. The glass is examined. The bottle cap's not examined because you're just using it to cover up the coins. And at the end, when you've tipped out the four coins and you show that they're not there, they want to examine the coins. They don't want to examine the bottle cap. I put the bottle cap away. At no point does anybody go, can I have a look at that bottle cap? Because the focus is not on the bottle cap. They've already examined the coins. They can see the coins. It's a, it's, the bottle cap's just a place to focus their attention. There's no emphasis placed on it at all. I do another routine, which is a reverse matrix, where I have four, co four co coins and I put them out on the table. And I bring out a bottle cap and I say, this is the bottle cap. And in this routine, I do focus the attention, but in a very different way. I say, this is the bottle cap. I'm going to put it there. We're going to get back to it in a minute. Watch the four coins. And I do a vanish of all four coins, but I'm keeping the coin underneath the card by just holding it back. It's very easy to do. If you've seen my Mirage coin set and you've seen the reverse matrix on there, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I don't refer to it as a matrix or making the coins jump. I'm going to make these coins disappear one at a time. So I make the four coins disappear. Apparently that's the trick. They've forgotten about the bottle cap. I've just made four coins disappear. And I say, you're probably wondering where they go. Well, all the coins can't disappear. They've got to travel. They've gone underneath the cap. The cap. And now I lift up the cap and see the stack of coins. Now, you see a lot of people using dynamic coins and they bang the, the cap on the table. And that focuses people's attention on the cap. I don't do that. I show the cap, I put it down on the table. It's there from the very, very beginning. I don't reference that cap again. The cap goes there. When I've shown that the four coins have vanished, they've forgotten about the cap. And then at that point, I lift up the cap and I show the coins. They think that's the trick, right? And then immediately... I, I only have that, those coins on display for about five seconds. So let's see if we can go back in time. Now I cover up the coins again with the cap. I snap my fingers, the coins have vanished. And then I focus attention and I have them move the cards. And when they move the cards, the coins are underneath the cards. The cap goes away. They're not focusing on the cap. They're focusing on the, the coins, which is completely examinable. There's a couple of examples. You know, I've got transpositions in there between ten pences and pennies, but all of them have something in common. Like there's this really cool coin through hand, which you see in the uh, in the in the trailer. And the whole idea there is I have the four coins examined. I switch them for the stack. The coins are here. I have them hold their hand out. I put the stack on the back of their hand. They can't feel anything. They can't tell the weight whether there's four four coins there or not. 
I get somebody else to cup their hands underneath. I grab their hand to hold their hand steady. I've got the finger palm coins directly underneath their hand. I cover up with the cap, I push down, and as I push down, I just let the finger palm coins go. They drop into the person's hands that are cupped, and, and the coins feel like they fall down, and then I just lift up the cap and I show that they're not there. Again, at that point, they want to examine the coins. They don't want to examine the cap. There is nothing about the cap. The cap is not a part of the trick. Now, if you compare that to dynamic coins, with dynamic coins, the focus was on the cap, right? Because it's like, look, I've got this two caps and I've got a ring. If I bang, some coins appear. Now, look, I'm going to put this cap over here. I'm going to cover these coins here and look, I can make the coins jump from here to here. Now I'm going to put this cap over here. I'm going to put these up. It's all about the cap. It's all about the cap. And because it's all about the cap, what happens is the focus is on the cap. So if you're worried about the weight of the cap, if you're worried about the, the, the look of the gimmick, if you're worried about all this sort of stuff, then just learn the routines off the tutorial. I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of energy for free putting these routines together because I thought it would benefit the magic community. And it's a little bit upsetting, not upsetting, that's not the right word, I'm not upset. But it's a little bit frustrating when I see people uh, attacking the project based on opinions that they have formed when they haven't even had the product in their hand. They haven't even got the product in their hand. They haven't felt, they haven't, sure as hell, haven't looked at the tutorial. They haven't looked at the tutorial. They haven't looked at how the trick works. They haven't looked at any of that. All they have done is they have watched a trailer and they have based their opinions on that to the point that when I go on there and very respectfully say, hang on a minute, that's not the case. Let me explain why, blah, blah, blah. And I take time out of my day to reply in quite detailed replies to the, the go, oh, you're being dismissive. What? Why am I even bothering here? What's, the, what's even the point? Right. I think I've addressed everything that I wanted to address. I think this is fantastic. Let's have a look quickly at some performance footage. Glass that I got from behind the bar, so we've got a glass. Inside this, there's coins. Five coins altogether. They're ten pences. Cut your hands there. You can have a look at them and make sure they're okay. Take your time. I get paid by the hour. So do what you want, really. I don't care. Are they okay? Good stuff. Um, and also, we're going to use, do you know like when you take the bottle cap and you rip the little plastic ring off? We're going to use this to focus your attention. I'm going to put this right here in front of you. Don't give me a chance to cheat. I will. I want you to watch very carefully and don't blink for a second. What's your name, by the way? Alison. And what's your name? I love how Alan is not blinking at all. He doesn't trust me. The idea is, <laughs> the idea is I'm going to put these under here. I'm going to put the bottle cap here so it goes more into the middle. Are you ready for this? Watch. All I have to do is this. And I can actually push the coins right up through the table. It looks like that. Now, I thought that was pretty good, but apparently I'm the only one. No, that was quite good. If the thing is, you didn't know what was going to happen. I'm going to do it one more time. You make sure I'm not cheating. I'm going to cover up those coins and put them right there. And I'm going to try, well, watch this. I'm going to try and push them through the table one at a time. And I'm going to have them land in the glass. That's what the glass is. Watch this. The first one. Did you hear that? That's coin number one right there through the, yeah. I'll do it again. You might have missed it. One coin. Watch. The next one. That would be the second one. That's coin number two. I love the look on your face. You look like a rabbit caught in headlights. Coin number three goes exactly the same way, watch. I wonder if I can lift that cap up and see what's underneath it. Well, I'll do the last two at the same time. Are you ready? Watch. One, listen, two. And that's all four coins penetrated. I can't believe you think I'm cheating. Genuinely, the coins have gone right through the table. See, I told you. I told you I wouldn't cheat. Not <laughs> That's exactly how it works. Huh? That's exactly how it works, of course. Yeah, it's magic. There's a hole in the table. There's a, there's a hole in the table, yeah. I mean, uh, I told you. I told you. That's exactly how it works. Let's, um, let's go one step further. Because I've proven to you, if you put this in the right place, and you take the coins and do this, I've already proved to you that you can go through the table. But what I want you to do is hold out your hand, palm down. Hold out your right hand, palm down like this. 
I'm going to put that over there, but generally, as a rule, the more you drink, the better this is going to be. <laughs> At the end of the night, I'm floating on the ceiling. Can you take both of your hands and cup them together and, and just go underneath his hand? Don't move a muscle. You feel them, yeah? You bring your hand a little bit further that way. And all I have to do is push right through your hand. <laughs> and you know what? You, thank you for helping. You can keep those. Oh, you don't want them. That's fine. Not a problem. Not a problem. That's cool. It's OK. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to do something with bottle caps. I like to do something with everyday objects. So I have two bottle caps. Yep. You know when you get a bottle, you take that little plastic yep. round thing that no one knows what it is and you pull it off? That's the round thing. And that's going to help focus your attention. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to start off with the red one. I'm going to put it there. Now, you saw me do a coin trick earlier on. I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to be a coin magician. There are several things that you need to be able to do. The first thing is appearance. That means making coins appear. This is how you do it. use your imagination. You take some nothing. You take the nothing, you throw them underneath the cap, and that's when we get uh, nothing, you see. Nothing's there yet, you see. It's not happened yet. If you, no, no, it's, it's when you snap your fingers, that it becomes real, you see. That's how it works. First time I saw that, I forgot to applaud as well, but don't worry about it, that's fine. No, 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 no. Hold the applause, I have a weak finish. Now, the vanish looks like this. You put the coins underneath. You can do this yourself, sir. You just snap your fingers. I mean, honestly, I think we need to give him a big round of applause at this point, because that was absolutely amazing. Come on. I know, you're so good. But you saw what I had to do. You know, if you want to make them reappear again, they're going to happen right here. Yeah. Just reach over and throw. That was, are you rather trained? That was amazing. Look at that. Well, I mean, honestly, he's doing it himself at this yeah. point. Now, the next thing you need to learn is something called transposition. That means making something move from one place to another. That's why I have two caps. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, the blue cap, that one goes right here on this side. Mm -hmm. And the red cap, that one covers up the coins over there. Now, the idea is to make the coins jump from there yeah. to there. Yeah. You snap your fingers over here, you snap your fingers over there, and that's when the coins jump across. I mean, I've not seen this before. This is confusing the hell out of me, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, that's pretty impressive, but what else can he do? Well, I can actually make solid go straight through solid. That's called a penetration. Would you like to see that? I know you would. Watch this. It's very simple. The idea is that you take the coins, you're going to try and make them go solid through solid. So I'm going to put that cap right there. Yeah. The coins are going to go on top. Yeah. How's that? Good, yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to put this cap yeah. covering yeah. everything. Yeah. So we're going to try and make them go through the red cap. Watch. All I do is this. And just like that, hopefully. I mean, honestly, this is getting pretty good, right? But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking maybe, just maybe, there's some sort of trap door in the cap, and they open up and they go through. That's what everybody thinks. So to prove to you I don't do that, I'm going to put this here. Put your hand on top of it for me, sir. Now I'm going to try and make the coins go through flesh and bone. Don't move a muscle. Don't even breathe. Actually, do breathe, because that would be weird. But the coins get covered up like this. Through the hand, through the flesh, through the bone, through the cap underneath. It looks like that. That is when the coin goes right through the hand. So lift up your hand slowly, because this is the bit where I get a huge, massive round of applause. Look. Oh. I know. But there is, there is, there, I know, I know, I know. But there is one more thing. There is one more thing. And I'm going to try and do the last thing. I've made the coins transpose. I've made them penetrate. I've made them appear. I've made them disappear. There is one last thing you can do. Watch the coins. Do you see them going underneath the cap? Yeah. I'm going to take the coins and put them in between the two caps. I can't get any fairer than that. Any fairer, you would be cheating me. You can even hear them in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one last thing that I could do is make the coins change. It looks something like that. And that's when they change into a whole bunch of pennies. And that's the trick. Thank you very, very much. Very well done. Very well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyway, what was your name again, sir? Tom. Tom. I got a bottle cap. Yeah? And you know when you take a bottle cap and you pull the little plastic thing off? That's the plastic thing. Tom, I'm going to show you the most amazing trick you've ever seen. <laughs> Honestly, this is going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your socks off, Tom. Are you wearing socks? 
Not for much longer, Tom. This is going to be incredible. I'm going to put the, uh, the, the bottle cap there. Now, if I asked you to think of a coin or several coins, psychologically, most people go for a two pound coin. I don't know why, but that's always the case. So I have here a deck of cards. They're blank on this side, but on the other side, I wrote various different, um, various different like uh, coins and denominations coins. So a stack of two pound coins, uh, you know, a five p and a ten p coin, uh, a five pound coin, a five a two p coin. I just went crazy because that's how I roll. Now we're going to try and do something. This makes it completely random. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to spread through. Just touch any card that you want to. It's totally up to you. That one right there. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't want you saying I'm cheating. No. To be clear, I'm going to cheat. I just don't want you to think I'm going to. That's the goal. Uh, have a look at that. Show everybody, don't show me. Have you got everybody? And then hold it in between your hands. Whatever it is that you're thinking of, I'm going to magically make it materialize right there underneath the bottle cap that I haven't touched. That's right. It just got real right here in Bristol. <laughs> Are you ready? You had a free choice. No way I could possibly yeah. know. Watch this. One, two, three. That snap makes the magic happen. What is it that you thought of? I'm sure you, know. you can tell me now. What did you get? A stack of 10p coins. Don't you think that's the craziest thing you've ever seen? I would say that is a stack. I know, right? Now, we didn't go too crazy, but don't worry. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Look, we'll put this one away and we'll do it again with you one last time because maybe you think that somehow I cheated. So we're going to do it again. You're going to pick a card. This time you're not even going to look at it. Whatever you pick, I'm going to make it materialize underneath the bottle cap. And I will cover up the 10 pences. So not only will I will make it appear underneath the bottle cap, I'll make the 10 pences vanish. Tom, hello there, sir. You're just about to see the best trick ever. You, you watch this. You don't have to go into the show. This is better. Touch a card for me. Touch a card. Any sign? Take your time, Tom, and get paid by the hour. Make it wait, make it wait, make it wait. Make it wait. <laughs> Tom's freaking me out here. Very good. Okay. You happy with that one there, Tom, yeah? We're not going to look at it. I'm gonna just going to put it right there, okay? Are you ready? The 10 pences. I'm going to make them disappear. Whatever's on that card, I'm going to make it appear underneath the bottle cap. It's going to go crazy. Big finish. You go nuts. You just got back in time for the big finish. Here we go. Well, first of all, let's look at what we got. A 1p coin. So I'm going to make the 10 pences disappear and make a 1p appear. Are you ready for this? One, two, three. And I think that is good enough for you guys to go crazy. Look at that. Wow. I know, and I tell you what, Tom. You that take my fucking eye off of it, though. I know. I know. I know. If you work it out, can you let me know? Because it freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> this stuff just happens to me. That's why I became a magician. Right? Are you, are you ready? Yeah. So, what's your name, sir? James. Correct. Well done, James. I got two bottle caps, right? Yeah. Um, and there's lots of different things that you have to learn to do if you're a magician. And I'm going to go through each one of them. Are you ready, Sonia? This is going to freak you out. I am very. We're going to start with the red cap. I'm going to put the red cap right here in front of you. Are you ready, Sonia? I am. You got a good imagination? If yeah. you haven't, can you imagine you have? That would be amazing. Can Check you this imagine out. I'm 31? Yes, I can. <laughs> I'm glad you can. I can't. Right. Reach in. Grab, <laughs> reach in, Sonia. <laughs> grab the coins. Grab the coins. Grab the invisible coins. Reach up, grab, and throw them like that. That's amazing. Do you know what she did? What? She made 10 pences. No, hang on. No, you, you didn't do well enough. Try again. Reach up in the air. Throw them. Let's have a look. If you did this, they're going to go crazy. Oh. Look at that! Oh, God! Yes! Wow. Let's see if you can go one step further, Sonia. Are you yes, ready? I can go one step further. Let's level up, Sonia. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're going to make them disappear, all right? So, look, we're going to cover them up with the cap. Okay. All you got to do is wiggle your fingers and make the most magical noise you know. <laughs> well, if I was a coin, I'd disappear. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's give it up for Sonia. Look at that. So are you ready to, are you ready to teleport? We're going to put the blue one right here in front of you. We're going to cover up the red one, put that one in front of you. All I want you to do is snap right there and snap right there. Her, not you. She's the one doing the magic. And that one. Where were the coins? Josh, the coins. Right. The coins were there, weren't they? <laughs> yes. Let's have a look. No, not yet. Try again. Snap again. 
Try it again. You're not cheating, are you? No, it's not me. <laughs> if you're it's going Patrick. wrong. No, you're the one doing it. Try again. Snap. Look at that. Wow. I know. How are you doing this? I don't know. Me neither. What? I didn't Show get that. Me your magic. You're doing the trick, not me. <laughs> Sonia, we're gonna. Show me your magic. Sonia, I'm gonna show you how to how to how. No, that's, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna show you how to make the coins penetrate through something. All right. Penetrate. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look, the coins go on top of the co on top of the cap. I cover them up like this. Okay. okay. We're gonna try and make them go through the red cap. Are you ready for this? Watch right here. One. To, you filming this as well? Am I on Instagram? Josh, Josh. I'm so excited. What? Watch. Fuck. Watch. What? Through the cap. Through the cap. One, two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But you're going to do this That's yourself, Sonia. That's what son. you're saying. Oh, yeah. Sonia, are you ready for this? <laughs> look. Sonia, Sonia, Sonia. I'm going to put the blue cap there. Cover it up with your hand. No, Cover it up with your hand. Nice and flat. There you go. Watch. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. We're going to put the coins on the back of your hand. All I have to do is push, and when I do, they go right through the back of your hand. Slowly lift up your hand. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> shit just got real. Slowly. You shit. Lift up. I'm joking. I'm lift joking. Lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. God. Look at that. Sonia, did you put them in there? Josh. <laughs> so there you go, that's me performing pro caps right there. That's me performing pro caps over and over again to real people at the Smoke of uh, Smoke and Mirrors Theatre Bar in, uh, in, in Bristol, which is an amazing venue, an absolutely incredible venue. And there is me performing pro caps over and over and over again. Um, and, and you can see the real audiences and they're not hating it. They're not going, hang on a minute, that's a gimmick second. Nothing like that. It's showing that this works in the real world. Look, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you buy this. Um, it's £34 over here in the UK. It's not the most expensive trick in the world. Um, and you get a lot. You get a two-hour tutorial. You get 11 routines. You get routines that are really good. I mean, some of my favourite routines that I've ever created are on this project. I'm so happy that I'm involved in it. As I said, I had to beg to be a part of this project. I wanted to be a part of this project because I knew that I could bring something to the table that nobody else could bring because of my experience with working with dynamic coins over the last 30 years. And I really feel like the routines, if you give them a shot and you try them out, you'll realize just how good they are in the real world. Um, I'm going to give this 100%. I would have to be an idiot to give it anything but 100%. For the people that are saying Craig's biased, duh, yes, I am. For the people that are saying this isn't a review, no. But you know what? If you want to go and see some reviews, go and have a look on a Wednesday at five o'clock. There's a ton of reviews on there. I'll be back next week with a proper review show re uh, uh, special. There are lots of reviews that will go up on this channel. I absolutely guarantee it. However, what I wanted to do with this video is I wanted to A, review it, B, address the concerns, the criticisms, and all of the issues that the Magic Cafe members have been bringing up and explain to you what my thinking was when I created the routines for this project, why I went round down the route I did, and why all of the things that people are talking about on the cafe aren't issues at all because of the way that the routines are constructed. And for, the, for anybody who goes on and says, well, you know, you can, you can try to convince people that it's good, but it's a you have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sorry, you have no idea what you're talking about. Go and perform it in the real world. Go and get the reactions. Go and see what the reactions are like. And then come back to me. Because this is a really solid trick. And I'm very, very proud to be a part of it. It gets 100% from me. I love Pro Caps. It lives in my pocket and I can do it anytime, anywhere. With that being said, let's wrap this up. Guys, thanks very much once again for joining me right here on Magic TV. Do me a favour, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Don't forget that if you haven't already joined The Netrix, you can do so. It's www.thenetrix.com. You, uh, you can join now and access all the information on there and then some. I'll be back again soon. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig for Magic TV. Mm.